What's up everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. One of the main questions I get and have been getting for probably three or four years now is, Jerry, how do I get involved in the fitness industry? How do I get involved with, um, you know, companies? Like how do I get sponsored by companies? How do I get my social media to take off? How do I get, you know, involved with these different companies, whether it's a clothing company or the supplement company or whatever? And um, like, how do I get noticed? Like that's, that's what the question is, like how do I get noticed? And um, that's the thing nowadays, that there's so many people out there trying to do what you're trying to do or what I just said, that you have to stand out in the crowd. And how you do that is by not, my personal way, I couldn't compete with all those pro bodybuilders. You know what I mean? Like those guys were killing fucking shows, they were fucking traveling, they had all these, you know, these, these other things going for them that I just didn't have and never would have based on, you know, where I came from. Like I wasn't going to be pro, I, I wanted to be pro worse than anything, but I realized in about 2000 and, uh, when Kevin Lavroni started training, about 2009, 2010, I realized that it is a game of genetics as well as drugs, hard work, like the genetics really are the main thing. So right around 2011 is when I started, you know, kind of really revamping some things and trying to figure out, well, my goal is to be sponsored by companies. My goal is to work with these different companies and travel and, you know, be in magazines and, in, you know, now there's not that many magazines around, but that was the goal, right? So I kind of looked at it and I said, well, how the fuck am I going to do this if I don't turn pro? Like, being pro is the whole key to it, right? That's, that's what I thought. And um, I then stumbled across an interview and then I did some more research from Vin Diesel. Now, maybe you go, Jerry, what the fuck does Vin Diesel have to do with anything in the fitness industry? Listen. You can learn things from people that will help you get further with what you're trying to do, even if it has nothing to do with what you're trying to do. So keep an open mind. When I was younger, my cousin Marty gave me a bunch of muscle and fitness magazines, a bunch of, he was really into working out and stuff. He was in the military. And um, one of the things he said to me, and I was probably about 14 or 15 when he said this, he said, don't just read the articles about the guys. You know, at this point, there was only bodybuilding in the magazine. He said, read the, the training advice from the women bodybuilders too. Because just because she's a woman doesn't mean you can't learn something about how to develop your body from that woman. Like, that's what he told me, and it stuck, right? So I'm like, all right, it doesn't mean necessarily that I need to go to a bodybuilder to learn what I need to do for the next step. Open mind, absorb things from all different areas, right? So Vin Diesel. And Vin Diesel, like many of us know him now, is this big star. And um, I think I saw him first in Pitch Black was the movie that I saw him in first. And I thought that was his first movie because I had no clue. Like, I didn't know who the fuck Vin Diesel was. It, like, I thought it was a fake, I mean, it is a fake name, but I was like, that name's fucking stupid. Like, it didn't, you know, really appeal to me what he was doing. But as he became more and more successful, I was like, here's a guy that kind of, kind of blazes his own trail, still keeps to himself, doesn't join in all the Hollywood stuff. He's just doing his own thing on his, by himself. And it kind of made me interested. Like, well, how the fuck did he wind up being involved with all of this Hollywood shit, and he's not one of those Hollywood elite where they, you know, have to all hang out together and party together, all that bullshit. How did how did this happen? And his backstory was, he was living with his mom, I believe, in Soho, in New York, and um, he wanted to be an actor, and he didn't really know, you know, where to, you know, get in touch with certain people and stuff. And he did some auditions and stuff. It didn't do well in him, and he was just like, I'm going to be an actor. And he said, you know. I need to get these parts. I need to get in front of people, da 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 And then finally, something clicked in his head, and he said, I'm not going to wait around for them to find me. I'm going to go out there and do my own thing. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to make my own fucking movie. And that's exactly what he did. He purchased a book, and if I believe correctly, if I remember, it was making a feature film or making a movie on a used car budget, meaning like if you took five grand, you could make a whole movie out of five grand. And this book basically walked you through how to do it. And he did. And the movie was called Strays, which I still to this day haven't seen. Like, I've seen pieces of it. But that was what actually launched him. That movie, when it pre premiered where it's Sundance or Cannes Film Festival, whatever the fuck it was, that movie launched him. And it all happened because he didn't sit around and wait for Hollywood to come to him. He went out there and took control over his own destiny and did it himself. And that made a lot of sense to me. I'm like, I'm sitting over here in Maryland... You know, nobody really knows who the fuck I am or what's going on. So if I just sit here and wait and I go to the gym and I train and hope that someone fucking walks in my gym sometime or I'm walking in the mall and someone sees me and goes, oh my God, we're going to put that guy in a movie or something. Like that's what it's going to take. And that may never happen. So I might waste the rest of my fucking life waiting around for someone. So what the fuck am I going to do? Now, this is part of my backstory that you guys, you know, you may know, you may not know, but 
I mean, you may know that how you know that I started like this, but not what inspired me or how I figured it out. So I took Vin Diesel's backstory and I fucking ran with it. I said, okay, here's the deal. I like the documentary Raising the Bar. My friend Dave Paulsonella and his brother Mike Paulsonella put these these documentaries out, and that launched Dave into bodybuilding stardom. Now he didn't turn pro. But all the pros knew he was. I mean, he was a, a star, basically, in the bodybuilding industry back then. This is like 2009, 2010. Based on these documentaries that they made, and they did it themselves. Very similar to Vin Diesel's story. I said, okay, this is where it's at. So I said, I'm going to make a documentary about myself, and I'm going to put it out. That's where I'm going to begin. So I stepped back, and I said, what the fuck would anybody want to know about me? Why, like, What would I want to put out there? I said, well, I'm just really into the gym. And it's not necessarily competing. It's like the life that I lead. And by the time I was dating Carrie, she lived the same type of lifestyle. Our fucking lives revolved around the gym, revolved around working out, revolved around competing, traveling to the shows. And I said, well, this is where we begin. I'm going to begin, you know, where I started training, where I come from. And it's going to go right up to talk about, you know, how her and I have a relationship. We're both into the same things, about how we travel. We're going to, we're going to basically make these little episodes of this documentary. And, um... At that point, that's what I'm going to release, and hopefully that will catch on. If not, we'll figure it out from there. So I put these things on. They're actually still up on this channel. They never, I never took them down. They're still up, and not many people watched them. Maybe a couple thousand people over the years have watched them, and they weren't doing well. You know, a couple, maybe like a hundred hits, eighty views, or whatever on them. And I was sitting there going, okay, this doesn't really work. <laughs> so now, what am I going to do? I said, you know, I'm going to do like supplement reviews. Okay, because so I was going to all the different expos like the Arnold and shit, and I was buying these big, well, not buying, I was getting all these free samples, bags full of free samples back then. I'm going to take those samples and I'm going to review them and tell people what I think about them. So that's what I did. I reviewed the fucking supplements. That didn't work out too well. Nobody really gives a fuck. You know, got a few more views than the other ones, the documentaries, but, and those are still up. The supplement reviews are still up. I said, okay, that's not working. What am I going to do now? I said, hmm, okay, I'm going to do some training videos. But I'll do like these these short vignettes because I'm getting ready for shows. So I'm going to do these things and put some music to them and just make these like little motivational one or two minute things. I put those out. They weren't doing anything. So now at this point, I've been failing, failing, failing. It's 2011. I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. And finally, I see a video by Ian McCarthy talking to Dave Paulsonella. They have like this, this video they did together. De just degrading him and talking down to him. And I'm like, who the fuck is this little geek with the glasses? Why is he telling Dave he sucks? Why is he telling Dave he doesn't know how to train? Why is he telling Dave he doesn't know how to die? Dave won the fucking North Americans. He's a heavyweight North American winner. What the fuck? Like, look at this little twerp, right? So I watched the video, and I was so insulted because Dave Penal actually became a friend of mine. I was so insulted with the shit that this kid was saying and, and not giving Dave credit for what he actually accomplished that I literally just turned the fucking... I had an iPhone sitting on top of a cat food container. That's how I used to record my videos. And I fucking hit go on my iPhone 5. And I just fucking let her rip. I didn't hold back. I was more of the Jerry what you see here than what I was trying to be in those other videos. And I ripped this fucking kid apart up and down each way. I fucking just went to town. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't know him. I didn't care. But I was going to stick up for my friend Dave. Fuck that kid, right? And I went to town. I expected nothing to come of that video. I woke up the next morning with 14,000 views on it. And I went, what the fuck? I'm like, what, what just happened? And I read the comment section, and they were like, yeah, way to fucking, way to give it to him, way to fucking speak the truth, way to be real. And I was like, wait a minute. I was like, these motherfuckers, they don't care about making documentaries. They don't care about a professional fucking camera. They don't care about fucking training footage. They want to see a real fucking person say real shit. And I was like, well, fuck it, I'll make a part two of that video. We'll see how part two does. Part two goes out. Because there was so much that I had to say that I made the part two. And this time, TWA, tw no, TMA, Twin Muscle Army, or Twin Muscle Workout. TMW was on there. Um, POG Army was on there. The Hodge Twins, uh, Physiques of Greatness, Chris Jones, and I think Vince at the time, had seen the video. Because this Ian McCarthy guy, unbeknownst to me, was actually, nobody liked him. They actually fucking hated him. And, and people were really, like, keeping their fucking mouth shut for some reason. Like, they thought the things I was saying, but they didn't say them. They wouldn't say them because they, they didn't think it was right to say that or talk like that about somebody. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck it. If I'm thinking it, you're thinking it, I'm saying it. I don't give a shit. And then I really realized, I was like, you know what? Like, it's not about trying to create some kind of art Right, because I don't know how to create that. I'm not a filmographer, cinematographer, film 
uh, a film buff. I'm not fucking somebody who knows how to edit well. I don't know how to fucking add certain music. I don't know how to fucking do the angles. I don't know any of that shit. I'm just me. And I was like, wait a second here. That's what I've been doing wrong all along. I've been trying to be something that I'm not. Which is exactly what Vin Diesel was doing. The Rock was another huge inspiration for me. I was actually on the treadmill at um, at the other house that I lived at. And my ex-girlfriend gave me a book. It was called um, The Rock Says. And it was a book about his biography about him. And it was basically outlined how he kind of just you know did football. And then when football wasn't working out, he just cut it off and removed it. And then jumped into the wrestling thing. And when the wrestling thing, he wanted to move on from that, he cut it off, left it, even though he's on top, and jumped into the acting thing. And it kind of really played out how, almost like a blueprint on how he did that. And I said, okay, well, the reason why this guy's actually becoming better and better in all of these areas is because he went being from this football player to a wrestling character that really wasn't him, to a wrestling character that was really him, to these acting parts that are starting to fit him and more his personality. So the more you be yourself, and then The Rock actually had a quote like that week on Instagram or whatever, and said, the most powerful thing you can be is yourself. And everything was falling into place. I'm like, holy shit, it's like signs from fucking God being thrust in your face. You have to go out there and fucking get it. It's not going to come to you. Very few people have something come to them. You have to go out there and get it. And by getting it, I mean you have to go out there and show the world who you are. Because that's what makes you special, being you. That's what makes you different. When I decided I wanted to grow my hair and my beard out, the first thing in my head was like, well, what if people don't like it because they're used to me being bald? And really quickly I went, it doesn't fucking matter because this is what I want to do and this is what I feel like right now. And I just went out there and of course started my growing my hair and my beard out. And now people are freaking out because they're actually happy about it and they like it. And it's such a drastic change. I went from being bald to having hair, from having no facial hair to having the hair. And you know, just like tattoos, I had very few tattoos before. I'm fucking sleeved in tattoos. You just be yourself and do your thing. And I think that authenticity resonates with people. I think people see it. When they see it, they know it and they feel it. And when they feel it, they're attracted to it because they realize they're seeing things in me that, that are them. They're seeing themselves in me. And I said, you know what? Like this is, you know, and again, it wasn't like I, I, I delayed on growing my hair or anything like that. It was just like, I want to do this. I told my wife, I said, I think I'm going to stop cutting my fucking hair. And she thought I was nuts. And I was like, you know, what? I'm just doing what I want to fucking do. Like when I switched to physique, I knew people were going to freak the fuck out and go, oh, he's fucking, he's taking the easier road out. He couldn't turn pro as a bodybuilder. I wanted to do physique. I no longer wanted to take the boatloads of drugs that I was taking. I had the rotator cuff injury. It wouldn't allow me to fucking train heavy. But I still wanted to compete. I still wanted to get on stage. I still love that. So I made the choice. And I took a few lumps from people that I fucking didn't understand. But the general consensus was, Jerry's moving on to this. What is he up to now? He really wants to do this. And as I spoke about it, people saw that I was really interested in it. I got more interested in it. I was practicing my posing. I was getting better at it. became really good at posing for the physique stuff. And they go, oh, well, that's interesting. He's taking it very serious. So this is something he really is into. It's not just for fucking camera. And that's the thing. If you're doing stuff just for the camera, you're doing stuff just for social media, you're doing stuff just to impress other people, no, nobody's ever going to come calling you. Nobody's ever going to find you. Nobody's going to give a fuck. If you're doing stuff that is specifically you, that is real, you're going to resonate. Now, you may not get a million followers. I don't have millions of followers. I got millions of views. I may not have fucking people at my doorstep fucking every day when I leave the fucking house. When I go somewhere every day, someone recognizes me. I have done what I wanted to do on my own terms, my own way, but plenty of other people paved that way before me and left blueprints like Vin Diesel, The Rock, Dave Pulsanella. So many people out there have done the blueprint already, but it takes you to find that special thing inside you, to have that come out, to create what you're going to create, to bring it out to the world. And once you do that, trust me, there's something in you right now, every one of you watching, there's something in you that the world wants to see. There's something in you that the world wants to hear you say. There's something in you that the world wants to follow because they want to see you succeed. Some people want to see you fail. But it doesn't matter because everybody wants to see something, whether it's failing or succeeding. They all want to see part of what happens in this piece of your life that you're sharing with them. But if you fake it, it's not going to work. If you sit back and wait for fucking people to come to you to make a motion picture about you, it's not going to work. C.T. Fletcher comes to mind, right? They made a movie, um, My Magnificent Obsession. I got to actually go to the, the red carpet premiere of that movie in Vegas at the Olympia, sit down, watch that with you know, a host of fucking bodybuilding celebrities, including C.T., who's a friend of mine. And that fucking movie, a motion picture, was made of him. But he went out and did it himself first. He was setting weights on fire, fucking doing curls. He was out there fucking being himself, getting after it himself. Generation Iron. 
the way that they did the, the first one with Phil Heath and those guys. They went after Rich Piano for the second one because he was a huge name and he was overshadowing a lot of the professional bodybuilders. Phil Heath and uh, Kai Green and Rich Piano all went out there and got that shit themselves. They all went out. They didn't wait for somebody to come to them. By the time those videos, I mean, those movies were being made, everybody was coming at them trying to do something with them. Everybody was coming at them trying to get something from them. But the first steps they took themselves long before that shit ever happened in a fucking room or a house that we don't even fucking know about, that they made the decision that this is what I'm going to do, and they failed. You don't think that Rich Piana failed at shit? You don't think that Phil Heath fails at shit? You don't think that uh, fucking C.T. Fletcher fails at shit? You don't think that Bradley Martin fails at shit? All of us fail every fucking day at something. But it's going, why did that fail? All right, that didn't work. So what if I did this? Would this work? Let me try that. And you get excited about what might work. And that might fail too. And there's times where you get down, you're like, well, fuck, nothing is working. And then all of a sudden, right when you're about to quit, when you don't, you succeed. It's the weirdest fucking thing. It's that point in your head where you think it's over. You have lost. It's done. You need to move on. That is the point, the breaking point. That's the final fucking test that lets you know you're about to be successful right fucking now. That's the message I want to get across to you guys. That point where you're just about to quit. When I did those physique competitions, I did five physique competitions, five months one every month. I stayed, I traveled to 5% Nutrition, I traveled to the Expos with Isatori, I traveled all over the fucking place, staying on my diet, training and cardio and still competing, right? And I was getting second, third, second, third, second, it was fucking second and third. My first one I fucking placed almost dead last, 27th. And I was at the point where they said, just keep coming down, dropping the muscle. I get down to 173 fucking pounds. I looked like I had fucking never lifted a weight in my life when I had a shirt on. But when I took my shirt off, I was fucking lean. It had a tiny little 27-inch waist. And I thought for sure, I said, you know what? I said, this is, this is going to be it. I don't think I can do any more. And I went to Del Marv out in Delaware, and I won the overall fucking uh, Masters Physique fucking division out there. And that was the first time where I said, you know what? I was really just about to give up two weeks ago. And I didn't. I went after it. There were times in bodybuilding where I got second, second, second. I was like, you know what? I'm fucking done. And I watched the show, the next show that I was going to do. And I hands down easily could have beaten that guy and won the class because I gave up and I never accomplished that goal. But I just kept at it and at it. And even though when I thought I was going to fail, I won. And that was the ultimate goal was to win a physique competition. So then it was to go on to the national level. But instead of that, what I said was, well, fuck, I did that. I accomplished that goal. Fuck it. Now I got momentum. I feel good. I want to keep going. Three weeks later or two weeks later, I'm sorry, they told me to gain the muscle back to go to the next fucking level. Two weeks later, I came back at over 195 pounds. Stepped on stage in the same condition, almost 20 pounds heavier in two weeks. And got fucking, I think it was third at the DC Grand Prix that we had, the DC Capital. Now that was something that I didn't necessarily win. But all the judges' jaws dropped and asked me what I did in that two weeks to gain that 20 pounds back and come in the same, same condition. I mean, of course, it was muscle memory, a lot of water, a lot of carbs. But the bottom line was, had I stopped before I won that show. I never would have won that show, never would have done that transformation to really get the judges looking, which then they actually knew me after that. They knew my name, they knew who I was. They were so impressed with it that they were coming up to me, talking to me at shows and stuff that these judges had judged me for years and didn't even know my name. But everything fell into place because I didn't give up. I kept at it. And just when I thought I was gonna fail, I didn't. And I sacrificed, I sacrificed everything all the time to accomplish these goals. I let a lot of things go in life that I thought were not as important as the ultimate goal, but I needed to do at the time. Like I had relationships that were fucking smashed. I had fucking money that I lost. I mean, there were so many things that I let go, jobs that I lost, family issues, all kinds of shit because I said, I wanna do this and I really need to do this. This is my life. And then we sit here tonight and I'm able to tell you, this is how we did it, this is how you can do it. And I have no doubt in my mind that you could accomplish what I did, if not more, many, much more, many, many more things than I did. But you have to have that go get it. You have to get off the chair tonight. Not tomorrow, tonight. Your, your job starts tonight where you plan tomorrow the first step you take on your journey to get where you need to go. And I promise, guys, if you don't give up and you just keep trying over and over again and you don't wait for shit to come to you, you'll be in exactly the same spot I'm at. And I promise you guys, it's not a bad place to be. Bowsterchang at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www. I don't even say that anymore. Bowsterchang.com's blog. It's the be where I am bicep, and we are out.